Welcome back. So in this lesson, we're going to look at adding a little bit of style with the CSS. So the first thing we're going to do is just recap on what we learned in lesson one with how to kind of create your folder structure, how to create your pages, and then how to add your HTML tags. And then we're going to look at what what CSS is and, and what it can do in its most basic form. And then we're just going to try out a few different things like adding background colors, adding borders and border, border colors, um, changing the color of your text and changing the size and font. Once we've done that, your extension task is to completely stylize the page that you've created for your last extension task. So let's see what we have. So here is our main page. So we have this test one. We have the image um, images folder, which we haven't populated yet. Now, if you wanted to create a new, if you wanted to create a new HTML file, once again, you can open up Notepad++ um, from your main menu. One thing you should be very aware of, though, it will open all of your old tabs. So if you don't want the old tabs open, you can just close it. A lot of my students go, oh, my God, it's deleted my work. Um, and it hasn't, actually. What you can then do, if you, if you want to import your own one just to make sure that it's from the right file, you can literally, if I just make this a bit smaller, you can literally just click on this and drag it into Notepad++ and it will reload it, which is absolutely great. And you can have multiple tabs of the same thing, so just be very aware of that, that it's a good idea to close your tabs and then reload them just to make sure you've got the right version. If you want to create another file, um, and we'll just create one for demo purposes and you can, you can go ahead and do this, you just say new, and then you say file, save as. Once again, locate where you've saved your work. So if you go to this PC, and you guys should have yours in your documents. Um, I've currently got mine on my desktop. Locate the web design project, and here it is here. Now, let's save our new HTML page, and we'll just call this test2, and then don't forget you have to say .html. If you don't do that part, it won't save it as HTML file, it won't work. And you can also, just to secure this as well, go hypertext markup language file. Now you've done that, you can press save, and now you have two files here, back to back, but you also have that test2 open here as well, which is absolutely great. So if we just close that, now let's have a look at what you need for every single page. So remember, you do need to do this doctype.html for every single page, followed by the HTML opening and closing tags. Now at this point, a lot of people, a lot of students forget they have to close the tags. So just make sure you've got that happening. And then you've got this head section, open and close, and we've currently got a title in there. And then you've got this body section with all of the H1 for the title, the P for the paragraphs, H2 for a title, and then um, subtitle, and then another paragraph. So let's just have a look at that. And I've, as you can see, I've populated it with some, some dummy text. So let's just make sure we save it. Now, if you haven't already got this open, you can just go to the run button and then launch in Chrome, um, and there it is. So I've already got it open, so I'm just gonna close that. And just in case you're not on the same version, all you can do is just press the refresh button, and there it is. So you can see very clearly I have a H1 tag here, I have a paragraph, I have a H2 tag, and then I have another paragraph. So if yours doesn't look like this, you might want to just take a, a second or two now just to kind of get these these paragraphs into place and, and kind of get it the way you want it. Because from this point forward, we're going to make this look a little bit better. We're going to try and make this, this so much better, which brings us on to the next thing. Um, what is CSS? So you can think of HTML as your page structure, and you can see everything's getting laid out here. And then you can think of CSS as the thing that makes it look good. Okay, it's so the thing that stylizes everything. There are three ways of adding style. You can do a style tag, which is the one we're going to look at today. You can do inline style, is when you basically have the word style followed by equals inside of your element. Um, and then you can add your style to that particular element. And I'll show you that one. And then finally, one we're going to look at probably next lesson is having a style sheet. The style sheet is my most preferred way of doing it. 
but in actual fact it does confuse things quite a lot so we're just going to do a style tag today and I'm going to show you how to do an inline style as well now if I just press save and refresh the page you'll notice that my h1 tag hasn't done anything yet so just by writing style equals and then these speech marks actually doesn't do anything and I'll show you that bit in a second okay so let's add some style so to add the style tag it has to go inside of the head section so it doesn't go in the body because it's a processing part it goes in the head remember anything that you put in the body will show up in the body so we want to process some information so we're going to put it in the head and I'm just going to say style and then don't forget to close the style tag um, now once we've got the style it's going to get quite long because we can do anything we can we can pick up on any tag and we can make that into a style so the first tag that I want to pick up on is this body tag okay I want to style the body tag so all I'm going to say is body and one thing you need to know now is I'm writing from this point onwards I'm writing in CSS okay from this inside of this style tag I'm now writing in CSS CSS does not look the same as HTML it doesn't use these square these these triangular brackets it uses completely different brackets so the bracket that we need and if I just zoom in and I'll show you this so the bracket that we need is going to be these curly brackets they're the ones next to the P okay well, you need an opening close so we've we've picked up the element which is this body and we've opened and closed these brackets now the way I like to format this is by saying body and then having a space and I put my elements that I want to start in here so the element I'm going to start is the background nice and easy and then I'm going to use colon and then I'm going to say the color okay so what colors do we want let's say red okay red's a nice color isn't it <laughs> okay so let's just look at this formatting this here from body all the way down to here is a CSS element okay so what we're looking at is saying right we're gonna style the body we're gonna style the background of the body and we're gonna color that body red so I've said background colon red semicolon okay that is the format okay so you can go ahead now and type that in um, and I'll just save and let's see what happens on our main page so I've just pressed save now let's do this and voila we have a really nice <laughs> a hideous color of red on a background so just spend a couple of seconds pause the video now and do the same okay so we don't like the red over here I've done something a bit clever because just by calling out um, pure colors won't always work there's only so many colors I think there's about 12 colors that you can pick up on um, and that's it but if you use a thing called hexadecimal colors you can have a million colors so over here in my in my browser let me just go back to my full screen over here in my browser um, I've typed in the word in Google color picker and it brings up this whole area and I can I can choose a color which is really cool and I can use this hexadecimal color here so this hashtag all the way through these six letters and numbers is what I need so if I press Control C to copy that now where it says blue I'm just gonna paste that in there and I'm going to press save again go back to my test page and voila I've got that color which is really really awesome um, you can also do gradients now let's do this but this is a bit advanced so if you don't want to carry on with this you don't have to but let's just do it and then I'll, I'll delete it here once again in Google I just typed in CSS gradient colors and it came up with a whole bunch of things and you can you can color these so if I just change this and make that like this and you know you can see this is the gradient color I've got the line through the middle I've got green I've got blue it's all very nice and I can change as much as I want and then the code that I want is this bit here that says background all the way to that bit there that says background linear gradient and then here's my colors so control C again to copy now get rid of the hashtag get rid of the six letters and numbers and press control V to paste now if it goes like this and you start losing bits you just need to scroll it back here save it again and now let's see what we got so straight away you've got three techniques there for just adding color I'm gonna take that one off because it's pretty hideous but the one that I would use is definitely the color picker so control Z just to undo that um, and let's just make sure it's gone back to normal so that's okay we like that color what else so 
once you've done that, let's look at what else we can do. We can add a border. So let's have another one. Now if I just format this by just pressing tab and indenting it. Now you can have a border. So if you say border, oops, and then colon, so same format as here, background, colon, and then finish it with a semicolon. And you must finish it with a semicolon, on a, otherwise it won't work. So we'll say a solid, which tells me we want a solid border. We'll say 2px, which means two pixels. Let's make it let's make it 20, just so we can really see it. And then let's give this a color. And once again, if I wanted to, I could use this color, but you wouldn't see it because it's the same. So let's just say red so we can see it. Semicolon, press save, refresh. And now look, around our whole body, we now have a border. Once again, you can use a color picker there. So if you want a different color, let's go for a blue. Let's move this around a little bit. And let's grab this hexadecimal color. Remember, you do have to include the hashtag as well. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to rub out the red. I'm going to paste that one in there. I'm going to refresh the page. And there we go, we've got my blue. So there's the first two things that you need to have a little play with. That's the background color and the border. The next thing is how do we change the color of the text? So we can start a new element. So this element, let's just say we want to pick out the P. I'm going to leave the H1 because I want to use that as an inline star, but let's pick out the P. Now this will do every single P. So I've got two paragraphs here and it will, it will pick up on those. So I'm going to say P and then the curly brackets next to the P. And let's just indent that by pressing the tab. And let's just format it by pressing enter twice and then tab again, just so it looks nice. And let's just say color. Now, I have deliberately spelled color wrong. Um, it's the American terminology, so you have to lose the U, okay? If you try putting U in, it won't work. So just be aware of that. Now, let's just say blue and press save and go back over to here. And now we have blue text. Once again, you can use the color picker. So if you want a different color blue, you can do that. So there's the color taken care of. Let's do the size now. So for size, we say font hyphen size. And then we need a colon. And then you need to give it, and I give it a points value for this one. So if I say 18 PT, which is points, which is what they use in word processors, rather than PX, which is what they use for web browsers. You can use PX if you want to. Um, P, points and PX is a, are just values that you can use. Um, so we say 18, it should be drastically bigger. And there you go. So we now control how big we want it. So let's just say we want it, I don't know, 14 should be a bit better. Now another thing that you're gonna probably wanna do is change the font itself. So what you can do is say font family. Now hold that thought a second. Yes, so what we need, what we can do now is put font family in. So font hyphen family, colon again. And the one I want, it's what took me a little bit of time, is Helvetica because this is a system font. It will work. You can also have Arial, you can also have um, Times Rome New More if you want to, but Helvetica should just work if I've spelt it right. Um, semicolon to finish it, save it, and refresh it. And you can now see that the text has also changed, which is great. So there's a few things to play with. Now, the very last thing I'm just gonna show you very, very quickly is an inline style. So I set this up earlier by saying style equals, I can also do it here. So I can also say H1 up here, and I can put it in here. Exactly the same as I did with the P, but I just wanna show you an inline style. So I'm just going to do something very quickly. I'm going to say color um, green. Okay, so look at the formatting. It's color, colon, green, semicolon. That gives me the same formatting as what I've got here. The only difference is it says style equals, and, and that will work. Okay, so let's press save again, and let's press refresh. And hopefully, you now see that the top is green. Now let's just change that. Let's change it to an orange just so you can see it a bit better okay and you can play around with these as much as you want which brings you to your extension task your extension task is to style every single element on your page 
um, as radically as you want using the formatting that we've just done. Try the color picker, try the gradient, and then I'll see you in the next lesson.